Welcome, 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 y'all, to So You Need to Tell Me, the podcast. This is season two, episode two, and if you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. I missed you. So for this episode, it is a very, very special episode because like I tell y'all, I am the voice that you hear of this podcast, but y'all are the voices of this podcast. So I was very excited to make this episode and cater especially to y'all. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at um.mindyou because I went and asked my followers to ask me questions that they would like me to answer specifically about mental health. And I also asked them a question, one question that I will reveal the results to at the end so y'all make sure to stay to the end to see what that question is make sure to like comment and subscribe if you're listening on apple or spotify make sure to leave me a five star rating and drop a review to let me know how i'm doing let me know what i can do better and what i'm already doing good so let's go ahead and get into it y'all so the first question that i was asked is why do people self-sabotage why do people self-sabotage because it is what they feel like they deserve and I feel like that is a very good question um so basically self-sabotaging is when you do something or you don't do something intentionally and it hinders your ability to succeed so a really good example is I know a lot of people who listen to my podcast are college students or have gone to college or know people who are in college So for a really quick example, say that you're a college student and you have assignments due every Sunday at 11.59. Now, you know that these assignments are due every Sunday. However, you work full time and you still wait until Sunday morning, every morning to try to get your work done. We know this as procrastination, but this is just another form of self-sabotage as well. Because you know good and darn well that you need more time than a couple of hours to get this assignment done. Granted, that's probably not even your own class. So you're trying to cram and do this, that, and the third. And then you also have to work. And it's just all bad for your mental. And then the craziest thing about that is you will do that and then talk bad about yourself. You'll tell people, oh, I'm no good at school. Oh, school is important. How can school not be for you if you're not applying yourself to school? It's all about prioritizing and understanding what is the goal here. If your goal is school and you are working a full-time job, then you have to make priorities around school to make sure your work is getting done first. That's just how it is. And I know that it sounds harsh and I know that it is easier said than done, but it is possible and it can be done. You have to really outline your life, write down what it is that you do, interview interview intervals <laughs> i can't speak to them y'all intervals by the minutes or by the hour whatever it is that you need to do to really detail what it is that you do throughout your day and you need to come up with one hour two hours throughout the day that you can dedicate to yourself to getting what you need to get done, done. getting all your priorities done because it is possible and you can do it and honestly, the worst part about self-sabotage is we're supposed to be our own protection, not our own pain. You're not supposed to bring your self pain. You're supposed to bring yourself peace. You're supposed to bring yourself protection. You're supposed to bring yourself pleasure. You're not supposed to be bringing yourself pain and everything that comes with that. So just take that. There are a lot of different forms of self-sabotaging. Um, there's overthinking, there's isolation, but the one that I really do want to touch on heavily is perfectionism because that's one that I feel like I see a lot. I also see it in myself a lot. Uh, particularly, it's really crazy because ironically, this is a whole different take of this episode. I have to record it, y'all, because of some difficulties that happen. Nevertheless, we're still here, we're back, and we're better, and it's going to get posted. But perfectionism really can hinder your success because, first of all, you were never created to be perfect. So you're out here chasing something that just isn't even a part of your reality. Let that sink in. You're trying to do something that was never in your cards to be played to begin with. You're not made to be perfect. You do not need to be perfect. You are beautiful flaws and all physically mentally everything you are beautiful flaws and all and you can do everything that you want to do flaws and all you can still succeed and i feel like a lot of the times we are our own biggest critic and in a world where everybody is always critiquing you in a world where there's always going to be somebody who doesn't like you i just feel like it's really important to show yourself some grace i just feel it's really important to be your own best friend because you just never know when you need somebody and if you have yourself to rely on, 
then you always know you have somebody have your own back you know what i'm saying just be there for you because it is really important for your own mental health self self-sabotaging happens so often that people don't even realize they're doing it everybody self-sabotages themselves in some shape or form throughout their period of lives they have done it even if you weren't aware of what the definition of it is you're doing it and i want y'all to become aware i want us to be mindful i want us to help each other build each other up because self-sabotaging is very much real and it really really can make your mental health suffer the next question that i was asked is what is the importance of protecting yourself from bad energy this is very crucial. This is very crucial in protecting your peace, your space, and your mind. You have to be very, very mindful of the people that you keep around you. As I've grown up, I'm in my 20 somethings and I feel like everybody who, who's in their adulting stage in their life, they start to realize and they really just start to just start to understand that you do not have to be in that crowd. Even though you were around them before and you've been around them for a period of time, you just do not have to be around that crowd. Remove yourself from that situation. If that situation is not bringing you peace, if that situation is not bringing you happiness, then baby, you need to go and you need to walk away. You need to go and you need to, you need to walk away while you still have your mind. You need to walk away while you still have your peace, your sanity, and your freedom. Because you do not need to lose your mind or go do nothing crazy behind no foolishness when you are already aware that this situation is not good for you. I've noticed that a lot of the times we want to be saviors. Like a lot of the times we want to be like, oh, we can fix this. I can work through this. I can get this done. But if you are constantly in a situation where the only way that you're happy is if you're reliving old moments and you're tiptoeing, walking on eggshells, scared of what to say and what to do around this particular group of people or around this particular space or environment, then you need to really think about removing yourself from the situation. You really need to think about what it is that you can do to stop that situation from being that way because there is no way that you can thrive in an environment where they're trying to stop your growth you cannot grow in a place where there's no sunlight you cannot grow in a place where there is no water if you're in a situation and all it's doing is draining you then you need to go somewhere else where it's raining baby because this is not for you the drought is not for you go somewhere else where you can grow go somewhere else where you can thrive because you go through what you go through you grow through what you go through you can get past that situation you can come back a better person don't think just because of what you're going through right now is terrible or don't think just because the situation or the environment or the people that you're around is a bad energy and you feel like you'll never be able to thrive you're in that situation by choice you are in that situation by choice the minute that you have the realization that this is not for you do not try to convince yourself that it is go ahead and remove yourself because you deserve a better and happy life the next question that i was asked y'all is a very very good question actually was my favorite question so shout out to you for asking this and the question was is depression a cause or an effect of poor mental health my answer is it can be both Think about this, mental health illnesses range, there's a whole lot of things, but for example, there's anxiety, there's OCD, there's triggers from trauma, there's a whole lot of things. So from those things, say you're having a panic attack or you're having anxiety at this point in time, just by going through that, just by not being able to function in your daily life the way you want to, that can cause you depression, that can cause you deep sadness, that can cause you to feel a type of way that you do not want to feel. But on the flip side, depression can be something that you're diagnosed with. It can be a chemical imbalance in your brain. And it can be something that you can't help. It doesn't have to be a situation that's going on. It doesn't have to be the environment or the people that you're around. It could just be something that you can't help. So if it's that, if that's the case, then obviously I would say that that is the cause for your poor mental health. But on the flip side, if you're having, you know, an anxiety attack or if you're going through those type of disorders or those type of illnesses, then I would say that that is the effect of depression. And the very last thing, y'all, is I asked my followers if they believe in therapy. Obviously, if you know, you know, your girl is pro-therapy. I say go to therapy if something's wrong, if something's not wrong, if you're bored, happy, sad, mad, whatever. 
go to therapy because there is this weird stigma that therapy is bad for you and there's this weird, sti- weird stigma that black people can't go to therapy or therapy doesn't help you and blah 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 I strongly disagree you can do it you can talk to somebody you need it and you can go get it it's accessible go do it if therapy is a resource that's supposed to help you and build you up and help you grow why not take advantage of that resource now I do hear a lot of stories of people that tell me that they've tried therapy and they had a bad experience listen y'all when you're trying to make connections friends or relationships do you click with the first person you meet no so stop trying to make that the case with your therapist your therapist may your first therapist second third or fourth maybe even fifth may not be the one for you and that's okay that is fine that therapist will be for somebody else but there is a therapist out there for you so go find them you know just go find them you may need somebody who looks like you so they can understand and relate you may need somebody who doesn't look like you and has never been through anything you've ever been through so that they can give you a different perspective every situation is different make sure you cater to what you need don't listen to so many outside opinions because it can really alter and make your situation an unpleasant one therapy is helpful and you can grow from it even if nothing is wrong you can just have somebody to talk to even if you have people to talk to in your life maybe you need somebody else maybe you need somebody who doesn't know you somebody who who can give you an unbiased opinion that's okay don't be ashamed don't ever feel ashamed for therapy but I'm going to put the results of what my followers said right here so that y'all can see where everybody else head is at where everybody else thinks as it goes with therapy but that's just my personal opinion how I feel about it I do believe in therapy and I do think that if think negatively about it then maybe you should just read up about it a little more maybe you can change your perspective get a different you know opinion about it and try a different therapist out because you can grow and you will learn from it so this brings us to the end y'all of the second episode in the second season of so you mean to tell me i really do appreciate you for being here i really do appreciate you for listening y'all this is just a blessing this is just a dream come true if you know you know i had to record this episode a bajillion times because my audio has been messing up and there's been so many different problems but i really have just been enjoying the process and i really am just blessed to be able to even do the process so it wasn't even something that i was upset about or it wasn't even something that angered me i'm just happy to be able to do it and i'm happy to be able to release this content for y'all and i'm very happy that i'm able to receive the information from y'all to give back to y'all so i I want us to be able to continue to grow together, continue to build together. Mind you, y'all are the best community out there. We're going to continue to grow. We're on the road to 100 subscribers. Make sure you subscribe, comment, and like. If you're on Apple or Spotify, make sure you leave those reviews and those five stars. And make sure you follow me on Instagram, y'all, at um.mindyou. We're going to be back consistent. We're going to do better. All the updates on that are on my Instagram, so I'm not going to go too much further into it. Just make sure y'all follow me. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I will see y'all in two weeks. So you mean to tell me? We out.